So the last bit for this particular section in this chapter is um, how to determine sample size because just like when we were doing polls in section 9.3, we have to know how large a sample we need to get in order to estimate the mean within the level of confidence and level of error that we're willing to accept. So the formula for that is right here, n is equal to z alpha over 2 times s over the error squared. Keep in mind, however, this is the third formula you've seen for sample size. Let me just remind you that you saw these two way back on page 9 of these notes. They're still in existence, so you're going to have to pay attention to when it's asking you a question of how many. How many do you need to go sample? How many do you need to poll? Are they talking about polling for proportions? That's one of these two. If they're talking about finding the mean, then that's one of this new ones, if I can get to the right page. There it is. Okay, so let's type it out. So n is equal to z, oops, I just did that wrong. <laughs> there it is alpha over 2 times s or sigma, I mean whatever you have on hand, whatever standard deviation they give you essentially. Take it over the error and square it. Now, for us in our particular problem, let's move it down here so we can see, we've got, let's see, a z of, well because it's 95 percent confidence, we learned way back in section 9.3 that that's a 1.96 s or sigma whichever is given is your standard deviation but for us we already found it it was back here 262.23 so I'm just going to type oops 262.23 and then on the error the error is given right here when they start talking about within or an error of no more than or whatever they're giving you how much wiggle room you're they're willing to let you have which in our case is 50 bucks and you take all that and you square it now nobody wants to do that kind of thing by hand so we'll make Excel do it and I'll grab a new sheet and it by the way if you didn't believe me about the 1.96 I could do it right now it's norm dot inverse um, probability would be 0 0.025, the mean would be 0, the standard deviation would be 1. There it is. Negative 1.96 or positive 1.96 if you did the 0.975. Anyway, so I'm going to take that value and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to put parentheses, parentheses, that value times my standard deviation which was 262.23 and I'm going to divide it by my error which is 50 and I'm going to square that. And there you go. All set. So 105.663. Now remember, just like before, we can't really have 0.663. It's not like you can actually get that many. So you're going to have to round up. Always up. It didn't matter. I mean, this could have been 0.003 and you still would have rounded up to 106. There we go for that. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me clean up this just a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of typing here just to make it easier because we have more problems to do than just this. So this was the Z. Let me shift this down for a sec. The S value was equal to 262.23 and then we need the error. The error is 50. And then I can do the sample size N equal to parentheses this times this divided by that squared. Now, why am I doing that? Well, because I can see that other questions are coming, <laughs> and so this will make my life easier for answering those. All right, speaking of which, what would happen if we raise the confidence level? Well, if you raise the confidence level, for example, let's say you made it 99%. When you do 99%, this value turns into 0 0.005, and that makes it that, and look what happened. It went to 182. So the sample size would increase because to be more confident we need to know more about the population so we need a larger sample size. What would happen if the margin of error was lowered? Well if the margin of error is lowered it makes your, very, your interval more accurate so the sample size would increase to make a more accurate interval with a smaller margin of error. 